Today we will be discussing chapter 1 of thesis or dissertation. This chapter is an overview of the research discussing issues that leads to the conceptualization of the problem. It establishes the rationale, context, and general direction of the study. Here are the subparts or headings under chapter 1 or the problem and its background. Let's start with the introduction. The introduction should contain the research topic, the reason which pushed the author to write his or her thesis paper exactly on the topic or the rationale behind the research problem, as well as justification for its selection. In the example shown in your screen, from unpublished master thesis of Ms. Janet Policarpio in 2022, it discusses the parental role of teachers and parents in education. On paragraph 2, there is a discussion with the roles before the pandemic and how these roles changed during the pandemic COVID-19. If you could observe, the discussion is general or global discussion. Let's now proceed to the next subpart, background of the study. It provides sufficient information for the readers to understand the topic you are researching about. It discusses the context of the problem and in what situation or environment can it be observed. The background information which describe the development of thesis topic. Try to read and understand the sample background of the study in your screen. The background presents the big picture identifying the context of the problem to be investigated. It sets the stage for the relevance and purpose of the study. This section contains a history of the issue you are investigating and how it was dealt with in the past. Next. The literature review, also known as the review of related literatures and studies. It was mentioned in the discussion about the conventional parts of thesis and dissertation that a five-chapter format or a four-chapter format is being commonly used by colleges and universities. Chapter 2 or the review of related literatures and studies of the five-chapter format is included in the four-chapter format in chapter 1 a subpart and other parts move a good literature review summarizes and critics related studies shows how their finding links to the problem being investigated a good literature review should also present contrasting views about the topic The current trend in the presentation of literature review is topical or by themes. Likewise, contrasting views can be seen in the example which is considered as good in writing your literature review. Next, let's talk about framework and paradigm. Adherence and alignment of this three should be apparent in your manuscript. The content of theoretical framework should be time-tested theories while the conceptual framework is founded on theoretical framework.
Let's have an example of the difference of the two. We will be using the theory of behaviorism. Behaviorism as a theory is broad. In fact, there are many postulants of this theory. In your research, you just intend to use the principles of stimulus and response. Of course, in your actual manuscript, there should be a comprehensive discussion of the theory. But for the sake of this lecture, we will simplify it. Now, in the conceptual framework, you could translate the stimulus to new teaching method and the academic performance as the response. The framework into which the ideas and practices of your field fit to form the research plan is known as the research paradigm. All other components of your research strategy, such as the study's purpose, research questions, tools, or measurement employed, and analytic techniques are guided by this foundation. Now, let's try to create a framework or paradigm based on the theory and concept. The teaching methods which we anchored on stimulus principle of behaviorism and translate it into concept. And we want to have a specific teaching methods to be used in teaching English. Then we have the response as the academic performance. This possible diagram does not only represent the reflection of the theory and concept, but it could also reflect the possible method of the study a possible quantitative experimental design could be used by having three groups and by testing the significant difference of its teaching method. A possible statistical treatment to be employed could manifest from this model, or this lens, or paradigm. Next is the statement of the problem. The researcher discusses the primary problem in this section, restates the primary goals for doing the study, along with the particular problem set forth in the questionnaire. Try to mentally scrutinize the example statement of the problem. Hypothesis or assumption Describes what ideas are suggested as possible explanations for the problem, situation, or condition and will be proved to be correct or incorrect by the research. Hypothesis tests the relationship, prediction, or difference. The null hypothesis is the hypothesis that will be tested. The hypothesis that would hold true in the event that the null hypothesis is incorrect is known as the alternative hypothesis. This is a possible null hypothesis of the paradigm that we created earlier by using behaviorism stimulus response principle. And alternative hypothesis is kindly observe how this were formulated. According to Cornuta and Germain, no assumptions are made prior to starting qualitative studies because such studies begin with a search for an understanding of the whole and any assumptions prior to the start of qualitative studies may distort the findings. But for Chigbu, in qualitative research, a hypothesis is used in the form of a clear statement concerning the problem to be investigated. Unlike in quantitative research, where hypotheses are only developed to be tested, 
qualitative research can lead to hypothesis testing and hypothesis generating outcomes. These are two contrasting views, so make sure you follow your institutional guidelines relative to the assumption when doing qualitative research. Significance or importance of the study. The significance of the study explains the importance or the so what of the research. It clarifies why the research is important, to whom it is important. Here is the example significance of the study. Scope and delimitation of the study. The researcher discusses in this section the setting of the study, the time frame, the number of respondents who will be involved, and the main focus of the research. Likewise, in this section, it discusses if there are any aspects of the problem the researcher will not discuss, and any factor, condition, or circumstances that will prevent the researcher from achieving all his or her objectives. Here is a sample scope and limitation of the study. Definition of terms Terms that have been defined based on their usage in the study, which helps to clarify the issue and prevent terms from having several meanings that could lead to ambiguity. There are educational institutions that define conceptual and operational terms separately. The conceptual definition are the term as defined by the authors or expert in the field, while operational definition the way the term is used or referred in the study. Some colleges or universities are not particular in separating conceptual and operational, as long as it helps to clarify the meaning of important terminologies used in the research. Here is an example of definition of terms. Here are the references used in this presentation. Thank you. It may not be easy, but it's possible. Happy writing.